Hey, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, we have a turntable that is so small, I can be shooting this video in 4x3 mode. Uh, this is a Techniques SL3. This is uh, one of those very interesting, although I'd have to say not completely necessary, technological advancements that happened uh, in the late 70s. Um, Techniques uh, was one of the companies that uh, thought that it would be a good idea to try to replicate the cutter arm on uh, the lathe that uh, makes the master uh, on a record. Because if you've ever seen a record being cut, uh, it's basically cut in a linear motion. And their idea was to repeat that on the playback side. Um, the idea being that a pivoted tone arm, which is your classic tone arm, uh, eventually will find some kind of tracking error along the width of the record. So although the tracking may be perfect here, it may be off here and I'm really bad at the end. And that's why we have alignment protractors these days to try to minimize the amount of distortion in the groove when a uh, cartridge is tracking the record from a pivoting tone arm. So their idea was to mimic the cutter and create a linear tracking turntable. So this tone arm, which is attached to the lid in this case, tracks the record at, uh, I guess you would say a 90 degree angle to the groove, right? Or actually, no, it'd be 180 because it's exactly the same. It moves at 90 degrees, but uh, it's in the groove along the whole length of the record in supposedly the perfect position. So no adjustment is needed. No, uh, like when you're messing with a cartridge, you don't have to put it on a protractor and change the angles and so forth. This, in, the in theory, should track the record perfectly from beginning groove to end, right? Now, although there's you know, only one groove in a record, but it should track it perfectly all the way. Um, but there are some problems, okay? Number one, the tone arm is in the lid. The lid is made out of plastic, right? So it's hardly a very strong, very solid base to mount the tone arm. Second, I know a lot of people do play records with the lid closed. Personally, I think the lid should be open. And because uh, when you lower the lid, and especially if your turntable's in a bit of a, a iffy spot close to your speakers whatever you can create howling because all the sound energy right may create a bit of a sound wave and affect the cartridge again that's theoretical me personally i like to have my uh, my lid on uh, or sorry open or off completely when i'm playing a record that's just me so that's another problem third and most importantly these are so over complicated to move this arm it requires motors and belts and microchips. On a standard pivoted tone arm, it's just the friction between the groove and the stylus that gently moves the arm. You have a bearing over here, which hopefully is well designed. And if it is well designed, it should not affect the sound of the record whatsoever. And it basically just friction takes it. This thing, you're talking multiple mechanisms to move this arm across anyway that is basically what the linear tracking uh, system was all about there are some really fine examples of linear trackers don't get me wrong um, there are some beautiful turntables out there that uh, the arm is mounted on some serious mechanism and it moves across the record not this where it's attached to a piece of plastic right and and goes across based on a whole bunch of uh uh, like I said, uh, belts and pulleys and all the rest of it. So anyway, this one's in for a service. And uh, if it's like most linear trackers, what happens is uh, you get a lot of gumminess in this area. Grease gets hard and uh, belts start to wear. The motors need lubrication and it can slow down the movement of the arm or completely uh, stop it altogether. I do have a video, I think on a Hitachi linear tracker where that's exactly the case. Um, Techniques um, did make some of the better 
linear trackers in this kind of market, the, the you know, the lower end, middle end kind of consumer grade. So um, a lot of times these just need some basic service to keep them running again. So let's just have a quick look and I'll show you how it operates. Okay, so to load a record, you have to open the lid and the cartridge is mounted right here. I know there's a reflection there. It's hard to see, but it's right there. And the tone arm is not really a tone arm. It's more of a, you know, it's just, it's part of the, the pulley system, so to speak. Um, this one's fully automatic, I believe, and it's got a 3345, or it'll set the speed automatically based on size. But if you have a 45 um, RPM record in the 30 centimeter size, you'd have to put it manually onto 45. So, so once you, uh, once you push down on the, the, the record pushes down the record, platter here um, it pushes this down it tells it that it's a record loaded and so does this okay actually this might no no this does this is not the uh, the trigger for it this is just basically this just sits down because if you have a, a 45 with a hole it just goes down this is your um, this tells the record player that there's a record on here so okay here we go so you put your record down and like I mentioned you have to close the lid and then on the front there's a play, stop, and cueing button, and repeat, and it's got a power switch as well. So when I hit start, the record should start spinning, and the tone arm should uh, start position, and it'll start moving. And there we go. So what's happening now is as the tone arm tracks, the angle of the cartridge will change ever so slightly. So it'll start to bend, okay? And that's another problem with, with this system. So it'll start to bend a little bit. And as soon as that cartridge turns, it activates a little micro switch, which tells the computer to move the tone arm a little bit. So basically what it's doing all the way down the record is this. So in theory, it's not perfectly moving across because ever so often, you know, it's going with the record with friction and then the computer's telling it to catch up with it. Now, were you able to see that? No, because it's doing it in very microscopic increments, right? But that's what's going on. And then this little arrow here tells you exactly where in the record it is. There's your 30 centimeter size, 17, 12 inch and seven inch uh, for our Imperial friends. And uh, that should be the end of the record. And then at the, at the very end, it should pick up and go back. Now you can hit cueing, which will lift the arm. I know it's kind of hard to see, but that came up there. And then you can move the arm itself. Now you can, the first press is slow. And if you hold it a little longer than three seconds, it goes fast. Okay. And then you can drop it wherever you like. And there are some linear trackers which have uh, I think it's an LED readout or something, and they can actually read where the tracks are in the record. Um, so it'll, I believe it does a scan and it'll see all the little indentations, or not indentations, but the, uh, the, the you know, the, the blank spot between songs and it'll, it'll put that in the computer and it'll say, okay, this side has five tracks and then you can select one through five and it'll go automatically. So it's a little bit of automation. And then at the end of the record, It'll read the readout groove. It'll lift the cartridge, stop the, the platter, and move it all the way back. Now, this one's moving fairly well, and that has a lot to do with uh, techniques build quality. So let's open it up. We'll give it a service, and uh, you'll get a better look at the insides of this Techniques SL3. Uh, the platter is belt driven. There are direct drive uh, versions of this, but this one is belt driven. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit, not too much, because I have to keep this open. We're gonna have to remove this cover to look at the mechanism. All right, to get the platter out, you have to remove your platter mat, which is proprietary. If you lose this, uh, unless you cut out your own platter mat, you're screwed because this is a hole for the uh, automatic mechanism here. And then there's a big hole for the uh, 45 adapter. <clears throat> All right, next. Um, this does not just come out. 
there are two little prongs here that have to be pressed in. So you just push them on the side like that, real simple. And then out comes your 45 adapter. You have a spring that has to come out. And then you have a big uh, clip here. It should just remove like that. And then it should be like any other turntable. Here's your belt. So remove your belt. Belt seems okay on this one. And then just lift off your platter. And there's your standard platter. Very ringy, very cheap. So not the highest quality, it's just aluminum. And here's our center spindle. It's an open type bearing. This one's really gummy and it's loaded with grease from the factory. Okay. And that gives you an idea what's in here. So what do we have? Well, we've got computers and microprocessors under here. We've got our power supply. Here's our motor, which is making awful sounds. Um, to service, let me unplug this before I electrocute myself. Um, to service the bearing, you have to remove a few things. So we're gonna service this bearing first. So the ground here, which grounds the center spindle, lose that little star washer. And we'll zoom in a little bit more here so we get a good look. And then you got a couple screws here on the front. And this looks like a uh, heat sink. Oh, and look what I found. Belt death. Right here. That is an old belt. That's what happens to your belt after 30 or 40 years. It turns into this disgusting, it changes color, it becomes red, and it gets all this weird crap all over. You do not want to touch this like it's already got all over my fingers. Ugh. And so that goes in the garbage because you don't want that floating around your table. Yuck. Okay. One more screw here. I don't know if we can lift this without. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to remove this uh, heat sink. And that screw is not in the nicest place. Okay, so you remove this heat sink. And now you can see you have to twist this. There's a little bit of glue here it looks like <clears throat> wow this is just like press fit but there's two prongs here as well hmm, that's interesting oh okay never mind you have to twist nothing just flip it up <laughs> it looked like never mind anyway there's our bearing okay Ew. It has grease on it, as you can see. All right, to get the bearing out, we're going to have to twist this. And I don't want to damage it, but I think we can just put some pliers on this part and gently squeeze that out. Easier said than done. That's really in there. Wowza. That does not want to move. I don't want to squeeze this, but this has got to be cleaned. Okay, I'm gonna to continue to work at this a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit of heat on it 
and I shall return. Okay, a little brain fart here. The uh, spindle is not connected to, any, well, now you see what I did there. Just remove this cap. Sorry, it's early in the morning here, brain fart. Just remove the cap, that's the bottom for the, uh, the spindle. And then, yeah, spinning on this will do nothing. All you're gonna do is make marks on there. You do not wanna crush this. This grease is very annoying. Um, yeah, so there's an E-clip here. This thing is loaded with very sticky grease. <clears throat> uh, just remove your, uh, your clip here. If you can, without stabbing yourself like I just did, now, this is messy and annoying. This one is fighting me all the way. Do not want to see it fling across the room. You bugger. Did I mention I really dislike you? Wow. What a mess of grease. Yuck. Uh, all right, so there it is. Clean this goop up as best you can. Wow. Well, they really loaded this one up at the factory. Okay, that's just the first part. We will be putting a dab of grease in the bottom of that cap there. But first we need a serious alcohol cleaning here. I'm gonna see if I can just kind of roll this up and get it inside there. Worked. Still finish up with a uh, Q tip. Did a good job at cleaning out that uh, bushing. 
paper towel there. Very good. Gonna dry up, get rid of this crap here. Okay. Horrible stuff. It gets on everything. All right, so what are we gonna use? Well, they use a grease the factory. You know how I feel about greases. I'm gonna go with an oil. And uh, because this is an open bearing, the maintenance on this will be to apply a few drops of oil a couple times a year, just at the bottom of the spindle here. You can lift it up just enough to get a couple drops in there, kind of like an SL 1200, whatever. The bearing is typical techniques, high quality. You know, even though it's dry, it still feels really nice. And then we'll put a dab <clears throat> of uh, grease right there. Okay, let's uh, let's grab our grease. We're going to use a 30 weight for the uh, the spindle here. Just put it around here. That will be more than enough. And I'm just kind of gently spin, spin it while I'm putting it in. Just like that. And then you have to put your clip back on. And then your cap. And that just kind of spins in position like that. And then your bearing is lubricated. And you put it back in. There's a washer here from the factory that's glued down. So I'm sure they've balanced this from the factory for height. Oh, that's so much nicer. So now for lubrication service, you're gonna, you know, when you wanna lubricate your bearing a couple times a year, just lift this up, get your oil there, boop, little drop, and you're lubricated. All right, so we have to put back our heat sink. I think I went like this. Scoop's a bit hard to put back. It's a ground. Another ground. A 
the slightly longer screw goes in here because of the height of that uh, heat sink. There. Very nice. All right. Now, motor. A drop underneath. Can you actually see that? No, you cannot. Zoom out. There we go. Motor. Right here. Just lift a little bit. One drop. Now look down. It's quieter already. We got one, two, three, four caps on the motor control board here. A couple pots on their 45 and 33 speed adjustment. I'm not going to touch anything, anything yet. We will check that uh, when we get everything back. And I'm going to do the entire bottom service here, and then we'll move on to our uh, linear tracking mechanism, which is quite a bit more work. So next is our belt and platter. So our belt is in good shape. It's obviously new. It is, this is very new. Obviously just replaced. Um, I'm gonna give it just the slightest cleaning. Just gonna run it through the uh, soaked paper towel here. It's clean. This is not clean though. This this was undoubtedly a smoker's turntable. It does have an odor of tobacco. And there is a yellow, disgusting um, film all over it. So we're just gonna clean the, ooh, see? We're gonna clean the inside of this platter here where the belt rides. Cause I'm just gonna get the belt all dirty. Yeah, just clean in here. It's really gross. Plus there was belt death on here too, right? A belt died on here, so definitely want to get that clean. Just to give you an idea how disgusting this thing is. Look at this yellow crap coming off of the outside of the platter. That's just tobacco grossness. Okay. So now, actually, one more thing. I'm not going to be able to spin this motor, I don't believe, unless there's a, uh, the platter's on and the button's pressed. Hmm. I don't think you can. Plus, you need the door closed for this motor to spin. So we're just going to do it with a Q-tip as best as we can. Want to clean the uh, the pulley on the motor with alcohol. So you're gonna have to do it manually. So just scrub. I prefer to have the motor running and just leave the Q-tip against the pulley, right? That way you let uh, let the pulley do all the work. But this works as well so okay now we're ready to put our belt back so just grab your belt wrap it around the inner here you know you have a proper size belt when it sticks to the inner just ever so slightly and you have lots of good stretch you do not want an overly tight belt it will affect the motor and speed all right, so now let me get this back. My belt got twisted. That noise you hear 
is the mechanism telling it that it has no record on there. I think if I push down on this, it goes away. So, yeah, so you have to push down on this and then it doesn't, now it technically should spin. I wonder if, man, you still have to close the door though. There's a, a switch here, which I believe is here. Whole bunch of switches and stuff. Anyway, everything's clean, so we don't have to worry about it. Let's put our, uh, our spring back. Actually, before we put our spring back, put our retaining clip. Just like that. Now our spring. And... Okay. You have to line up your hole so it matches the trigger there, which is right there. That's that. Okay. Now for the fun. So we have a Sure M92 LT here. You can remove your cartridge just by unscrewing. The retaining screw. Let me uh, zoom out because you're not going to be able to see anything. This is going to be difficult to film because just the way they're set up, right? And um, so you release this one screw here. Uh, that's the cartridge retaining screw and then your cartridge will come out just like that it's a plug-in p-mount okay sure m92 lt we'll clean the stylus all right now for the fun we have to remove the plastic lid there are two retaining these clips here. Either side, don't lose those. Okay, and let's on the back. Two more up here. One bigger ones on the back. Two. And then we're almost there. Pull out slightly. So got rubber grommet where those back clips are. They need to come out. You just pull out slightly on the uh, on the dust cover. It will just dislodge them a little bit, and get your finger on there just like that. And I think we're good now, except for some gross tape holding it in at the back. I don't know what that's about. So there you go. Okay. Now. If I remember correctly, this just comes up. Just the, the lid here. There's something under here. No, that's just a...
Okay. I know there's just some retaining clips in here, but I don't want to snap anything. I'm really worried. This is just plastic. Um, I'm just going to have a peek at the service manual before I break something. And I shall return. I just want to say that the service manual is completely useless um, when it comes to removing that cover. I believe there's three screws here that you have to remove. And it does not say that. It just says pull out, which is a load of crap. So you have to put the turntable kind of on its back. And it looks like there's three screws here because if you pull, that is going to break. Nothing about these three screws. Nothing. No. My guess is it's those three screws. And my guess was right. You know, service manuals are a godsend sometimes, but see, here they are, right here. But uh, when you forget to tell us about certain things, I could have been tugging on this thing and this would have been broken. And trust me, I, I was tugging on it a little bit, but I knew not to go too far. All right, here we are. Welcome to the very complicated, there's a little belt, um, mechanism which controls your linear tracking. And we are going to zoom in because there are several service points here that we need to cover. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the turntable backwards here so it's not hanging off the edge of the bench. And uh, we can get really good shot here like that what's that pretty good a little bit closer there okay here's our tone arm quote unquote tone arm doesn't look like a tone arm does it i've already removed the the cartridge as you saw here's our main rail right here and it is lubricated with what has now become uh, glue, okay? That is no longer a grease. So that's, what, that's the main culprit here. This gets very gummy and refuses to move. So you have to clean this off. And it is so sticky. There's no real great way of doing it. Um, I am going to use, you know, if I can only, I think I can get the arm to move now because we're in the closed position. Let's see here. Just going to plug it in. And uh, we need something to hold that down. Maybe some tape. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just move this over down let's see if play works yeah there we go so it's spinning it's moving so that's what we want because we got to clean this whole rod here so i'm just gonna put it back and uh, i'm gonna use a little i'm gonna leave the power on there's no uh, high voltage here i'm gonna use a little wd-40 to to uh, eat the grease I know it's on the platter. I will clean that off. When the uh, grease is that far gone, you need something strong. And WD-40 eats grease for breakfast. All right, let's uh, let's move it over. And clean over here. Not to put too much. 
Come on, Cam. What are you doing to me? This is the uh, detector mechanism here. It's actually the tone arm. And as it tracks over, it tells the record to move. So it's on a little pivot, right? So the arm is technically not 100% perpendicular in the groove, right? Okay. Um... All right, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to remove the post. Probably would have been easier. But I get rid of a lot of that uh, grease to begin with. So we just want to remove that. Just set that aside. Ugh, I can still feel it. And um, I'm going to pull it through like this. Okay, and now we can really clean the shit out of it because it is so gross. We'll clean with alcohol now, and I want to clean inside of here. There's a lot of grease. Ooh, you can see it, it kind of spurted out as soon as I uh, removed that. Look at it all. It's just tons of it. It's a messy job. It gets on everything. It's no longer grease though. All right, so we'll get a clean paper towel. And now this is the alcohol because we want to remove the WD-40 as well. Because the WD-40 will attack whatever lubricants we put on there and thin them out. WD-40 is not a lubricant. That is a clean rail. Perfect. Doesn't matter which side goes in. They're identical on both ends. There you go. Perfectly clean rail. And uh, now we're going to clean inside. I had a Q-tip here. Alcohol. Oh, here it is. Alcohol. Get inside of here. Get rid of all the grease. We're going to push it out. Come out the other side here. Clean it all off. Because that stuff is bad news. And I'm going to use a second Q tip. I want this thing like totally, completely clean. I'll go in through the other side now if I can. Okay, very nice. All right, that's it. We need to let that dry a little bit. So 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use a synthetic <laughs> grease here. Uh, synthetic grease, where are you? There it is. So I'm going to use this ultra slick synthetic grease. Not a sponsor. And I'm going to put just a little bit on this side because we're going to stick it back in. Here's our rubber grommet, which goes in there. That can go in afterwards. So we're just going to put a little bit here. Like that. And we're going to insert like that. And our rubber grommet will go in on the end. And then it goes into the post like that. Okay. And then our other side just comes in like this. And put it down into its slot. Put the screw back on. Okay, and now we can uh, we can lube it. It'll spread around as it moves back and forth. Don't over lube it. All that's going to happen is you're going to push it towards the ends, right? Just a couple times, having the arm go back and forth, you'll be fine. All right, let's move it and see what happens. There we go. So it's starting to collect here, right? Let's see if we can go a little further. There we go. Okay, and then we'll send it back. We have a very weak belt here. Definitely slipping over here. This belt shot. Yeah. Which is not unexpected, right? Anyway. Okay, I'm going to have to service this belt. I don't even know if I have something. I might have to order a belt for this thing. belt is over here and uh, it has seen better days it uh, barely goes oh my gosh yeah, look at this, eh? I don't know if I have one this is probably the smallest I have that's way too big Way too big. All right, so yeah, this belt is shot. Look at that, eh? You can see the little rips in it, little tears. It's done. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to order a belt. And I'm going to uh, 
pause here because I'm going to try and boil this in the meantime just to uh, get it back to a position where it's maybe a little tighter. And then uh, from there, at least we'll get a, a representation of how it works. But I'm going to, this one's going to need a belt. I'm going to have to order a belt. So I'm going to just go boil this in the meantime, try to get it back to a kind of a round position. But this is 100% shot. So um, I'll be right back. So just uh, searching on the web here, um, when you put in belt, most of the times you're going to get the belt for the platter. Um, but there it is there. It's called a tone arm belt for Techniques SL3. And uh, it's about 11 bucks. So we're going to order that. But in the meantime, I've got uh, the current belt boiling. So I'll be right back. So welcome back. This is the best I could get this belt. Um, it's it's uh, pretty much done. I'm going to try and reinstall it. I put a drop of, of what? Oops, sorry. I put a drop of oil in the motor there just to lubricate it. I'm just going to put this belt back for now and see what happens. If it can, it's way too loose. That's, that's shot. It's too bad. But we got a one on order. Yeah, that's complete garbage. I can't do anything with this. So I won't even be able to really demonstrate how this thing works. It's just way too loose. I know it was moving before, but this is not acceptable as far as and it's all split too. Anyway. Uh, let's see here. Is this on? No. <laughs> it is moving, which is crazy, right? I mean, it's looking for a record right now. There's no cartridge on there, but I believe it's, it, I don't know. Yeah, Okay, well, I kind of hate to leave this at this point in the uh, in the video, but while I'm waiting for a belt, did you see how this arm moved over here? That trips the uh, on-off switch here. There's a little micro switch here. I'm going to leave this here. Uh, I don't like to leave a video incomplete like this, but this belt is really not cutting it need a proper belt there. I don't have anything in stock. So um, you've got the basic idea. If you did have a proper belt, you'd put it, obviously the mechanism back together and this turntable will run perfectly fine. Um, clean the car. Actually the cartridge that was on there, it was garbage. The needle was totally broken. So I do have a spare here. I'm just going to put this uh, Techniques uh, P511S on there um, for the customer. And uh, you know, it just needs a it needs a new P mount cartridge. So, other than that, that's that's it. That's the SL3. Uh, you saw how we serviced the interior parts of the motor and the spindle. Uh, you've seen how we serviced our main uh, rail here. And uh, as far as the grease on these plastic parts, it's perfectly fine. It's uh, still pliable, and it's just plastic, right? It's not a big deal. Um, there are some bearings here that you can lube there and there and obviously the motor bearing you can lube and uh, Once you get all that together, these are pretty reliable. So But anyway guys, that is the SL3. Sorry. We could not have a satisfying ending to this but uh, like I said, I'm gonna get a belt on order and uh, I don't know, Maybe I'll revisit it if uh, if the belt comes in fairly soon. Don't know, but uh, thanks for watching catch you in the next one Fooled yeah video is not over been messing with this thing for a little while now um give it a good cleaning as well because it was just too bloody stinky i just took it out and i hosed it down pretty much uh put it all back together and uh the belt is it i've ordered a new belt for it but uh this one's it's okay it's kind of it's moving the arm semi okay so i thought you know what kind of video uh can i put out where there's not a satisfying end right so anyway here we go
Let me turn that down a little bit. All right. So you'll see that motor spin every once in a while. Right here is a hall sensor. And this is a magnet. The motor is mounted sideways. There's the pulley for it. Spins this pulley here, which in turn spins that worm gear, which in turn spins this, which has that string all the way across it, which pulls on the arm. And the arm rides on that rail that we cleaned earlier. Now I've installed just a, one of my P-mount cartridges here in the meantime. And uh, it's working all right. Okay, so queuing. And there's your queuing, and then you can move the arm over. And then you drop your queuing again. And all the while, that little motor with the bad belt there spins. The belt was 20 bucks, and it's actually it's coming from Portugal of all places. So hopefully that arrives before the end of the year. Otherwise, this person is not getting their turntable back. But in the meantime, uh, it's working good. I just want to show you one more thing. Oops, I have the repeat button on. Now that should just shut off. Okay, there we go. All right, so if we open this up, which is really tough to do with one hand, and we remove our record here, and we'll just set it aside. This is the record size detector switch. And what happens is, when you close the lid, this bumper here, pushes on this arm so it pushes it back like that and it brings out this little arm you'll see it over there and what that arm does is it touches the record and if it touches the record there's a little click in here a switch goes and it tells the turntable you've got a 30 centimeter record on there and then the needle will drop at the beginning of the record. If it's a, a smaller record, um, this will just stick out and won't get pushed back by a record and then it'll know it's a 45 or a seven, cent, a seven uh, inch record. So there's also an adapter you can buy for this thing. I was reading the manual for 25 centimeter records, so 10 inch records. Um, I don't know if this one has it. I don't think so. And I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be some kind of arm or something that goes on here but I thought you might find that interesting um, anyway now the techniques SL3 is complete and we will catch you in the next video see you later